All right, let's talk about furnace sequence of operation. Sometimes newer technicians can kind of get confused or intimidated by furnaces, but I'm going to show you that really when you just look at it logically, everything makes sense and it helps you go through the diagnostic process so you don't waste time checking things that uh, are not part of the problem. We want to approach a furnace as a sequence of inputs that create outputs that create other inputs. So it's an input, output, input, output sequence. So the very first thing that happens is we get a call for heat on our W terminal. That's an input. That triggers the board to look for another input. The next thing is the board is going to look to see whether this pressure switch is open or closed. And it knows that your inducer isn't running yet because it's not telling it to run. So it's looking for that switch to be open. If this switch goes bad, you can't just jump it out and go get another switch. The furnace, when it gets that call for W, it looks for this input. And if it sees that this switch is closed, it's not gonna go any further and it's gonna fall down. But the input to our W terminal creates an output here to this inducer. So once you get a W, your inducer should start running. That output creates another input. So now that the inducer is running, you should be able to uh, close your pressure switch. That creates another input to the board. So the board receives that input from the pressure switch and it says, okay, we're gonna start our sequence of operation after a time delay. So the next thing that happens are two outputs. The first output happens after that time delay and it's our hot surface igniter, or in some cases a spark igniter, will energize. Now that hot surface igniter will need a, a further delay in order to glow red. And then another output happens. That's this gas valve. That gas valve is going to get a, a 24 volts from the board, so that's an output from the board into the gas valve. And that gas valve is going to open. Once the gas ignites, the board is looking for another input to verify that the flame is there. That's in the form of this flame sensor, allowing a 5 microamp DC signal to come back to the board. That allows the board to continue its output to the gas valve to keep it open because it knows it has flame. If you don't get a flame signal, it will almost immediately shut back off the gas valve so you're not dumping raw gas into the combustion chamber. So it's looking for that input from the flame rod to allow it to continue to supply gas. Finally, after a time delay, the bore produces another output, and that's your blower. Your blower relay will energize. If it's an ECM blower, you'll get the 24 volts to the module, which will energize the blower and allow it to run. There are other inputs to the board that it's looking for. It's looking for the status of limit switches like this high limit and this flame rollout switch. So if any of these open during the sequence, it's gonna, in the logic of the board, tell it to either start all over or to fault out. If at any time during the sequence, this pressure switch opens, then the system is also gonna fault out. That's your basic sequence of operation, no matter what furnace that you're working on, no matter really what age. So you don't have to get specific into a brand or a model of a furnace. Every single one is going to follow that sequence, that logic. Now, what it does with that information, whether it faults out immediately, whether it flashes a code, whether it tries three times before it faults out, all those things are manufacturer specific. But if you know what you're looking for, if you know what inputs trigger what outputs, this is going to help you in your diagnostic process.